Now in this video I'm going to look at numbers 5, 6, and 7. It's going to take you about 10 seconds to do each one of these and then maybe a minute to write your comparison for number 6 and number 7. Remember I am not doing the actual problems in your lab on number 5. I'm actually doing uh, this for two-fifths, okay? I change the numbers and I will use two-fifths. First, I'm going to show you how to do this by hand or with a calculator. The mean is simply n times p. Uh, if n is equal to 10 and p is equal to two-fifths, the mean is equal to 10 times two-fifths, which is 10 times two-fifths is 20 divided by 5, which is 4. The standard deviation is the square root of 10 times n times p, um, square root of n times p times q, where q is simply 1 minus p. I'll show you that in just a second. But for my first one, I would get a mean of 4, st uh, standard deviation of 1.549. Remember, I changed this. This is not your answer. Want to see something really nifty and obvious? Remember the binomial distribution calculator I showed you? It does this. So if I put in my P of two-fifths, the mean I get is four. The standard deviation, of course, I would have to round it to three decimal places, but it would be 1.549. Again, though, I wanted to remind you how to multiply fractions. A whole number times a fraction, 10 times 2 fifths, is just like saying 10 over 1 times 2 over 5. Top times the top, bottom times the bottom. I get 20 divided by 5 is 4. Standard deviation. Students often forget to take the square root. That's why making the binomial distribution calculator your best friend will help you a lot. I like for students to show how to do it by hand, but you could check your work with that uh, calculator I shared with you for sure. So I would have the square root of 10 times 2 fifths times 3 fifths, which is the square root of 60 over 25. Square root of 2.4 is 1.549. Remember that Q is just 1 minus P. So if P is 2 fifths, Q would be 3 fifths. If P was 7 tenths, Q would be 3 tenths. You just subtract uh, from 1. All right, so the Excel file, doing this by hand, there is no way to miss it. The next one, I would use 1 fifth, okay? Remember, I changed the numbers, and I'm using 1 fifth for this one. 10 times 1 fifth is equal to 2. Standard deviation is the square root of 10 times 1 fifth times 4 fifth. Again, the 4 fifths is Q. 1 minus 1 fifth is 4 fifths. Take the square root of that, I get 1.265 rounded to three decimal places. If I wanted to do this on the binomial distribution calculator, I would simply go under P and type in equals one-fifth, and I nail the mean and the standard deviation. All right. Now, they do ask for a comparison in number six. In other words, you've got to give the mean, the standard deviation, and a comparison. If you do not, I will mark it at least half wrong. But, the comparison is easy. They simply want you to compare your results to what you got in number five. So for my example, I would say my mean was two compared to the mean of four I got in number five. That makes sense That's the pro since the probability for this one is one-fifth. I would expect to get the results one-fifth of the time, or ten times one-fifth equals two. Finally, number seven. I did not do the same probability for mine. I did this for four-fifths. I get a mean of 10 times four-fifths, which is 40 divided by 5, which is 8. Standard deviation would be the square root of 10 times four-fifths times one-fifth would be 1 1.265. If you could not hear me in the uh, live lecture, the square root of 10 times four-fifths times one-fifth is one point. 
uh, 265. And if you remember, the square root of 10 times 1 fifth times 4 fifths was 1.265 for my number 6 example too. The reason is, on number 6, n was 1 fifth, p, I'm sorry, n was 10, p was 1 fifth, q was 4 fifths. On my number 7 example, uh, my, my p and q are just switched. I think that's going to be the same for your number 6 and 7 also because you've got 1 fourth and 3 fourths. So you're probably going to get the same standard deviation for number 6 and number 7. Um, if I wanted to do this in my binomial distribution calculator, I would just type in equals 4 fifths. I'll show you in just a second. And then it will give me the mean and the standard deviation. In writing my comparison here, I would just say my mean was 8 compared to the mean of 4. I got number 5. This is not what you write because you're right, you, you've got a different problem. I just said that would make sense because the probability for this one is 4 fifths. I would expect to get the results 4 fifths of the time, or 10 times 4 fifths, is equal to 8. Now, let's go over and let me show you that one more time. So for my number 5, uh, what was it, for 2 fifths, so I would type equals 2 divided by 5 for P, hit the enter button. There is my mean, my standard deviation. I need to round that to three decimal places for, what was my next one, 1 fifth under P in the green box. I would click there, type equal 1 divided by 5, hit the enter button, boom. Mean of 2, standard deviation of 1.265, rounded to three decimal places. I would show the math, too, but I've given you the math so you know how to check it. I'm telling you this will be right as long as you've got your N and P right. And then finally, for number, my number 7 was 4 fifths, so I would type equals 4 divided by 5, bazinga, mean of 8, standard deviation of 1.265. We nailed it.